taking the time as um, we launch our fourth edition of the 2024 Economic Status of Latinas in California report. Hello, my name is Helen Torres. I'm the CEO of HOPE, Hispanas Organized for Political Equality. HOPE is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization committed to ensuring political and economic parity for Latinas through leadership, advocacy, and education to benefit the status of women. At HOPE, we build Latina community power by preparing and supporting Latinas as civic leaders, advocating for policy changes that champion equity for Latinas, and educating the public on the experiences and contributions of Latinas to our, our making to our economy and society. As part of our commitment to elevating the Latina experience, we conduct research that highlights Latinas' many contributions to our society and identifies where challenges still lie and persist into achieving political and economic parity for Latinas in our communities. Today, we are delighted to launch the fourth edition of the Economic Status of Latinas Report for the State of California. This series, initiated in 2013 in response to the impact of the Great Recession on Latinas in California, provides a comprehensive analysis of the progress made as well as the challenges still facing Latinas in achieving economic parity. A thank you to Wells Fargo for funding this report. Actually, they've funded all four reports. The report serves as a call to action to policymakers, community leaders, and stakeholders to implement equitable solutions and provide targeted support to uplift Latinas in California. By working collaboratively, we can create a more inclusive and prosperous future for all. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Macias, the lead researcher and author of the report. Dr. Macias is a seasoned researcher, analyst, specializing in education technology, science education, information technology policy, and she has been instrumental in producing the Economic Status of Latinas report in California since its inception, and was the author of our most recent Hope Economic Status of Latina for the State of New York. Please welcome Dr. Macias. Thank you so much for your contributions, Dr. Macias. Thank you, Helen. Thanks to everyone for joining us. I'm just going to jump right in here by sharing my screen. Um, so as Helen said, we examined uh, national, state, and regional data on a variety of metrics, plus reports and briefs to understand how Latinas in the state are faring. So our analyses uh, compared the status of Latinas with white women and white men who are the majority population and who have historically fared better economically, as well as other groups of women. And additionally, we conducted a series of interviews with Latinas from across the state and from various ages and backgrounds to get their input on how they are doing and how they could be better supported. We found uneven advancement in education and small business ownership with many barriers hindering greater achievement and economic status. So California has the largest uh, Latino population in the nation and Latinos comprise the largest demographic group in the state's population at just over 40% of California's total population in 2022. This is data that most of us know. Um, the state experienced an overall decline in its population between 2020 and 2022. However, the Hispanic population remained essentially steady with only a slight growth of around 350,000 people. And as the state's population is reporting growth again this year, we expect that its Hispanic population will also increase proportionally. Latinas make up nearly 20% of the population and 40% of all women in the state. So that's one out of every five people in California that is a Latina. And in some areas such as the Inland Empire, Fresno, Bakersfield, and Merced, Latinas are well over 25% of the total population or over half of all women. As a group, Latinas are 17 years younger than white women, um, although before the pandemic in 2019, it was 17.4 years younger. Similar growth trends can be seen nationwide on the right side of this chart. So Latinas are advancing economically, but we still face many disparities. On the left side of this graph, we see that the average white non-Hispanic woman in California working full-time year round earned 81 cents for every dollar earned by a white man in 2022, while Latinas face a wider wage gap. 
Latinas earned only 45 cents for every dollar earned by a white man. In the US, it's 57 cents. If we include all women with earnings, meaning women working part-time or seasonally, which is on the right side of this graph, the wage gap widens. Latinas earn only 42 cents for every dollar earned by a man, while white women drop even more to 71 cents. So what that means that women will have to work longer than men and live on less in retirement. Looking at specifically at earnings, the median for Latino household income in California is considerably lower than that of white households. The difference in uh, incomes have ranged from the mid to high 20,000s since 2020, which is much higher than the gap in incomes nationally. In 2022, the average Latino household income was only 73% of the average white household. The Latino home ownership rate increased by an impressive 3.7 percentage points between 2020 and 2022 as they purchased homes at above average rates and narrowed the gap with white non-Hispanics. But their 2022 California home ownership rates was still 16 percentage points behind that of the white non-Hispanic population. Latino home ownership rates in the Inland Empire, where real estate is more affordable, stood at 61.3% while it was only 38.7% in the LA metro region where real estate is much higher. Home equity is the primary way to build wealth for most people. And in fact, home equity and retirement accounts together accounted for 62, sorry, 65.2% of household wealth in 2019. But only 40% of Latinos hold equity in their own homes compared to 58% of white households and only 41% of the state's Latino households hold retirement accounts compared to 68% of white households. And for those that do have retirement accounts, accounts the typical value is $82,000 lower than for white households. So adding lower home ownership and retirement account ownership rates, the wage gap and lower levels of income generally, you end up with a substantial wage gap that grows over time and generations. Latinas are enthusiastic, enthusiastic entrepreneurs contributing to the state's economic engine by creating 150,000 jobs with a payroll of nearly $6 billion. Latina-owned employer businesses increased by over 26% between 2018 and 2021 and represent nearly 12% of all women-owned employer businesses. Moving to educational attainment, uh, continue to see improvement despite many challenges. Two small examples here, although the 2023 Latina high school graduation rate dropped a bit from, from 88% the previous year to 87% in 2023, it nevertheless exceeds the state overall graduation rate of 86%. And they narrowed the gap with white women. The graduation rate for Latina English learners are significantly lower, but also show improvement. Latinas 25% sorry, 25 years and older uh, with at least a bachelor's degree increased to 18.3% in 2022. However, 47.8% of white women 25 and older have at least a bachelor's degree and the gap between Latinas and white women widened between 2018 and 2022. Many health disparities were exacerbated by the effects of COVID-19. Life expectancy at birth declined over four years for Latinas over four th uh, and over three years for Black women at the height of the pandemic between 2019 and 2021, compared to 1.8 years for white non-Hispanic women. Latinas and Black women also face higher mortality rates and disparities in maternal care. The uninsured rate for Latinas in California stood at, at the historic low of 8.8% in 2022, but still higher than the total rate of 6.5%. However, both are expected to rise as pandemic era policies are expiring. Bringing Latina perspectives to leadership roles ensures that California's diverse communities are fairly represented. Many, many Latinas have the education, skills, and experience to fill leadership roles in elected office and in the corporate world. But both statewide and nationally, the number of Latinas in these roles continues low. 
Latina representation on the boards of publicly traded companies in California is abysmally low at only 3%. Gubernator gubernatorial appointments are also well below parity. Progress in elected office has been uneven since 2015. The number of Latinas elected to the U.S. House of Representatives stands at less than 8%, only four Latinas. And there has been only small improvement in statewide office in the past three years with Latinas at parity among the state senators, but not among its representatives. Latina interview uh, respondents voiced concern about their low financial literacy levels and how they limited their ability to build wealth and manage their retirement savings, regardless of their actual finances, because some of them that we interviewed were doing quite well. Many of them were deeply affected by or concerned about high inflation rates, and especially so soon after the pandemic and the social upheavals that came during that time. Several of the women we interviewed struggled with the high cost of living, some even in danger of losing their, uh, their apartments. Nearly all of them worried about the impact of inflation on their household finances, but also on, on, on the economic health of their communities, their friends and their families and the communities more broadly. Other recurrent themes were the appeal of being business owners uh, or having an interest in starting a business. Several have very specific plans to do so. Um, and then more than in previous HOPE studies, the Latina interview responses talked at length about the weight of financial obligations to their parents or to their children who were dependent on their contributions and how helping them, them may be in compromising their own retirements or their ability to buy a house. And finally, unlike in previous HOPE studies, Latinas um, have always expressed very high levels of optimism about dealing with their current financial circumstances and their future prospects. But in this report, the Latinas we, uh, we interviewed last fall were cautiously optimistic, still optimistic, but you know less, less so than in previous reports. Um, but they nevertheless shared stories of resilience and perseverance and reliance on family and community. As in past reports, HOPE has crafted actionable recommendations for addressing the barriers that they that Latinas encounter. I've listed some of them here, but I won't go into detail as many of them are listed in detail in the report, uh, but I've listed them by category. Uh, HOPE has policy recommendations on financial literacy and wealth creation, on the wage gap, on how to invest in small business women, on Latina small business women, on how to close, uh, continue to close the educational outcome gaps, um, on making college more uh, accessible and affordable, on expanding access to healthcare, and on on um, how to uh, in increase our our uh, visibility in leadership and representation. So um, thanks for your attention. I invite you to check out the report for more information. So at this point, uh, what are your questions? We welcome anyone to put a question in the chat or um, I think that's the best way, right? Is to, for questions on the chat, Maya? Yes, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Um, we do have a question in the Q&A box. Um, why is this report important? Why did HOPE conduct this report? Thank you for that question. I will go ahead and answer that. The importance of this report really centers on two key factors. One is the demographic uh, reality that we face here in California is the fact that Latinas make up 20% of our population um, with that growing as a number, as well as that Latinas represent over 50% of today's school age children. So when you have such a growth in a population, a population that's growing as the majority, you want to ensure that that population is on a road in a pathway for political and economic parity because the responsibility continues to grow on the shoulders of Latino and Latinas. So this report is important to ensure that we have strategies in place 
of policies and of systematic changes that need to happen to ensure the prosperity, not only of Latinas, but the prosperity of our communities and the prosperity of the future of California. That's why this report's important. That's why we've been doing it now for, uh, the, in, as we spoke uh, to since 2013, and this is the fourth edition. I would say the next thing is that what's instrumental about this report, as Dr. Macias has um, really centered, is the conversation around what are some of the policy changes as we look at the demographic changes, as we look at what the data is telling us, what are some of the policies and investments that we can make as individuals, as a society, and obviously here in California, what can our system of from private and private um, can do to ensure success for Latinas and in, in the economic realm. And some of those policy recommendations are so important to look into, especially how do we diversify the wealth creation that needs to happen in our communities. We know right now home ownership is ticking a little bit up, but there's a lot more opportunities for home ownership. We know that it needs to be much more diversified. So savings, um, opportunities in our retirement needs to be increased. And then also ensuring that our policies are create opportunities for Latinas to be entrepreneurs. They have a hunger for that. They want to serve their community through their businesses. And we think that this report really highlights ways in which collectively we can come together to support Latinas. Thank you, Helen. There's another question in the chat. Um, how did the interviews with the participants add to the data? Um, were were there were the findings aligned with the interviews? Yes, thanks. Um, I think it's uh, we've always either done focus groups or interviews as part of these reports because it's important to capture what Latinas on the ground are thinking, how they're feeling, and that's not always going to be uh, something that's evident from data. Uh, government data or from reports. So we tend those that's where we tend to find what um, what the day to day looks like with Latinas. What are they worried about? That's where we find um, that's where we find the issue of um, you know the 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 financial interdependence that we're starting to that we've always seen and that was a particular it's becoming a particularly um, uh, relevant issue as a lot of the women that we're talking to are planning for retirement. Uh, you know, their parents maybe didn't have the opportunity for various reasons to plan for their retirements. And so now a lot of the women who are in their 40s and 50s are, are even 60s are having to help their parents with uh, managing uh, a better retirement, a, a you know, more comfortable retirement. How does that affect them? Uh, we also spoke with a 20 year old who uh, is thinking about you know how she's going to be able to afford her own home when uh, or pay off her, her student loans when her family's uh, relying on her financial contributions to keep that household going. Um, we hear the kinds of things that uh, like the issue about um, optimism. Um, Latinas are a particularly optimistic group of women, and it's very helpful to them in dealing with some of the challenges that they face. So knowing that the very high levels of optimism were, you know, were a little bit affected by what, you know, the entire country as a whole has gone through the last four years was really important to know. We need to be able to figure out how to bolster these women who are hungry for and trying to achieve all of these uh, different in these different areas to become more economically successful, more financially secure. Thank you, Dr. Macias. There are just two more questions in the chat and I'll combine them. Um, one, is there a call to action for the report? And then is there anything else um, that you would like to add or mention in terms of a highlight? Um, and, and then maybe we can wrap up on that note. Uh, I'd love to take the first one, um, the call to action, then perhaps Dr. Macias, he can wrap it up with the, the last question asked. Um, the, the clear call to action is investment in Latinas. Ensure that our education system is a strong system that not only ensures Latinas are graduating from high school, but have clear pipelines and pathways to higher education or technical assistance or, or technical career opportunities. So we wanna make sure our education system, um, system is strong 
and providing these pathways for Latinas. Secondly, we want to ensure that there is a collective effort to ensure the diversification of Latinas when it comes to the diversification of wealth creation in our community, that it can't just be reliant on buying a home, which is becoming more and more challenging these days, but that it's also inclusive of robust policies that ensure retirement plans. And these policies could be ab adapted by either public or private companies, um, as well as to ensure that there is answers to what could be detrimental to creating your own business. So we want to make sure that we have a business-friendly community that allows for Latinas to flourish, that there is access to capital, and that we ensure that Latinas are, are able to start their own businesses, but not just start them, but really flourish as business owners, and in that they can hire more individuals in their communities, but they're, that they're making a lot more money than the 50000 which seems to be the ceiling cap for Latina mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. So there's a call for investment in Latinas. I'll just add, um, Helen, that you mentioned earlier in, in my, in, in my uh, presentation as well that Latinas are 20% of the state. 20% uh, means that they are really uh, important to consider as a separate group. And that's part of why we need to be able to have the data. We need to be able to look, see how Latinas specifically are doing. Um, we, be, we need to be able to understand uh, what's different about Latinas from Hispanic men uh, from other groups as well. And also some of the similar challenges that they are facing um, in uh, uh, as their fellow uh, women, uh, Black women and Asian American women. So in order to do that, we always need to have better data. And one of the struggles with this report is uh, that's gotten easier over the decade that we've been doing it is having access to aggregated, disaggregated data. So um, uh, if, if, as we're investing in Latinas, we also need to understand that, that they need to be looked at as a separate group and to, in order to better understand how we can um, add to the greatness of the state. Great. So with that, I want to thank everyone for their time. Um, we are accessible myself and Dr. Asa Macias to speak on this report. We look forward to hearing any additional questions outside of this Zoom and appreciate everyone joining us. Have a fantastic day.